I have been collecting for over 10 years. I have bought over 300 watches from $10 to up to $10,000. Along the way, I have made so many mistakes. So this video is all that experience condensed in watches that you really should avoid. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do so by clicking the button below. On this channel, we review entry-level watches, but of great quality. I am going to be leaving the links to watches that I do recommend on the description of the video as well. But let's start the list of the watches that I do not recommend with an easy one, and that is fashion watches. Most collectors know by now not to fall for fashion watches for one simple reason, because they're not worth the price asked for. Case in point, when you've got a watch that is by Lacoste, Calvin Klein, or designer brands, you know that those brands are not making the watches, of course, but most especially you know that the watches are going to be pretty much low quality, as they pretty much always are. I'm talking really basic quartz movements, I'm talking very basic cheaply made designs, I'm talking most of the time mineral crystals, and that's okay, that really does not matter as long as they would cost what they should cost. Most of these watches production costs can range between the, I don't know, five to ten dollars, and they will sell them for 200, 250, 300 dollars because of the name on the dial. So don't fall for these, they're absolutely not worth the asking price. A second type of fashion watch is one that is more insidious. The type that cuts out the middleman, such as Vincero, Filippo Loretti. They are watch brands, but once again, they are most of the time they are made of off-the-shelf designs that get stamped with their brands and they're going to market the hell out of them to young people through social media and make them look like the cool product on sites like Alibaba and those Chinese vendors, the exact same watches can cost up to 50 times less than what these brands sell them to you for. So the margins are just insane. Luckily, these watches have been losing terrain and not appealing as much as they used to to young people, but they're still out there. If you want a watch much better made than a Filippo Loretti or a Vincero or whatever, You've got Timex. Timex is a historic brand, an American brand. You've got Casio, one of the most beloved brands out of Japan. You've got Orient, you've got Citizen, you've got even Seiko at some point are historic brands that are much, much, much better value than these wannabe watch brands. These second types of watches that I recommend you not to buy unless you're really knowledgeable are vintage watches. I am guilty of these, I have been guilty of these so much because I love vintage watches. I love vintage Seiko watches, I love vintage Omega watches, and more dangerously, I love vintage Rolex watches, and that has cost me dearly because of something called the Franken watch. The older the watch and the more valuable the brand of the watch, the more people are going to try and put parts on it that are not original to the watch or even to the brand. Swapping the dial, swapping the hands and less visibly swapping the movement or movement parts. So you end up with something that can be sold dearly to you, the person that is not informed, and that has absolutely not the value that you bought. For example, a few years ago I was looking for a Rolex GMT 1675. I was crazy about that watch. I informed myself forever, but still I had not enough knowledge. I went all the way to London, I live in Paris, I went all the way to London to get one of these and to inspect it personally. I even stayed overnight and everything looked fine on the surface and when I exposed the watch to the light, I saw that it had a bunch of problems. I even made a video about that, one of my first videos. You should check that out and sorry about the bad quality, but it was, I was just starting making videos. And the more expensive the watch gets, the riskier it gets for you. I think that a great example of these 
is what happened with Omega. Recently, uh, I believe it was Christie's or Sotheby's or something like that, was selling a vintage Speedmaster that was a Franken watch. And this was a scandal. This was a major scandal because such a reputable company was selling a Franken watch. The third kind of watches that you should avoid is the watches that you buy to impress others. With all this social media craze, we are all victims of wanting to show off, but this then leads us to eventually buy things that we don't need or that we do not actually want for ourselves, and we buy them just to impress other people. This in turn leaves us pretty empty, I believe, and one of the questions that you should ask yourself is, if I, if I were to buy this watch, would I wear it in five years? And would it give me as much pleasure to wear it in five years? If you buy a watch, it should always be for you. Remember, it's your money, it's your paying for it. So nobody can tell you what kind of watch you like, only you can say that. Another type of watch to avoid is the watch a la mode. This is not really the fashion watch or not exactly the same. Case in point, remember about one or two years ago when we had these Tiffany Blue craze that the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, you've got an RRP, I believe it was $5,000 around that at that time for that watch. It went crazy in the secondary market up to fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. It was just insane just because it was the fashionable watch. Remember the Moon's watch? Those watches were retailing for even not, not even $300 and you could find them right after they were launched for, for ridiculous sums, $2,000, $3,000. It was crazy, it was just because it, they were the watches too hot at that time. I believe that the people who paid two or $3,000 for a moon swatch are regretting it deeply right now. And the last part of the video will be dedicated to fake watches. It is one thing to buy a homage, and we do talk in this channel a lot about homages, and to buy a fake watch. A homage is made by real companies who pay taxes and that are not usually from the crime scene, from the, or from the international organized crime scene. A fake watch will be made by unscrupulous companies. In most countries they are illegal to own and you can get fined only for owning them which is the case in France for example, but in the USA as well. These watches are usually bad quality and even though you've got what are supposed to be super clones that you couldn't even say if they're fake, well, you can always tell. And even people around could not tell. You're only fooling yourself because you can always tell. If you want something that resembles a Submariner, buy a homage. There are thousands up there. I have covered many, many Submariner homages in here. The ones that are covered are mostly great quality buy one of those, or even better, buy a watch from a reputable brand with their own design who will make you as proud to own. Buy even a diesel, buy even a diesel big daddy, I don't know, but do not buy a fake watch. That is the worst thing you can do. Alright guys, that has been the video. If you have made it up to here and you are not subscribed to the channel, now would be a good time to do so. We review on this channel great watches at affordable prices. I will be leaving you here with many recommendations for wonderful watches at the best prices. Thank you very much for having watched the video and I'll be seeing you very soon. Goodbye.